Hello everyone and welcome to Monday. Hello everyone, it's Melanie Wood, founder of Speaking Styles. I hope you are having an amazing start to the week. And today's live, hey Samantha, today's live we are going to talk about how you use your voice to make a difference in the world with the amazing and wonderful work that you do that you could look at going on tour or just getting started now and be able to use your voice to really be able to help make a difference in the world. So I have three key learnings that I'm going to share with you today. So we're going to look at why did I create the tour? Um, how did it go? And what did I learn that you could learn if this is something that you are looking to do? And it doesn't have to be on tour, it could just be getting started with workshops um, or doing more of them. Then there's still some really good takeaways that you will be able to learn today. So if anybody does have any questions on any of this as well, pop them in the comments and I will keep an eye on them there. I see there's quite a few people on. So let's get started. I, will I do have some notes written down because I wanted to be able to go through these three takeaways. Um, so I will be looking down at time to time just so that I make sure to give you the value that um, I wanted to give you all today. So thank you everybody for joining me, much appreciated it. And be able to look at, you know, investing in yourself as well by coming onto these lives, learning something that you could potentially take away with you as well. So thank you again for taking some time to join on now live or to do it on replay as well. So we're gonna look at why did I create the tour? So my tour went up to central Queensland. And um, for some of you who might be in different states or different countries, I am living in Brisbane, in Queensland, and central Queensland is around seven, eight hours drive north. And I used to live in central Queensland for five years before I moved back down to Brisbane. So why I created the tour um, is because I absolutely love the regions. I am so passionate about them um, because I did, I was living there for five years and I started my business there. And the regions do work differently to the city. They don't necessarily get the same access to the things that we do in cities. So I wanted to be able to take that back to the regions and not everybody can be able to come down to Brisbane or go to a city all the time to be able to access the events. And not everybody wants to do everything online. Some people actually want to attend live events. So I wanna be able to create that for them. And I did go up there um, November last year. I only did two workshops when I went up there in November. This time round, I did four workshops. So I added a new town and I added uh, a fourth workshop within the same vicinity. So one of the reasons that I created the tour at that time was because Beck Smith, who lives up in Rockhampton, had started doing Babes Bubbles business event for women. And she had an event running in February and she asked me to, be, to do one of the workshops. So it meant that I was able to go up there and do the workshop to, um, to be a guest speaker at her event and then be able to run my tour at the same time rather than having to go up at different times to do that. So that was probably why I created it at that time because it meant that I was able to do that plus I was then able to be able to engage um, and helping some of the speakers as well. So Regions are a passion of mine. Helping women is another really big passion of mine. So this time I created, uh, I went to Emerald. Um, I did a Yipun, Emerald, Gladstone and Rockhampton. So four workshops and also the Babes Bubbles event. So that's really about the why I am able to do that so maybe for yourself is that if you've maybe got speaking gigs or you're looking to combine something in the same area maybe you're going on holiday or maybe you're going to visit someone somewhere else 
why not then look at planning to be able to do a workshop or a speaking gig or something like that at the same time because then it just opens up more potential um, it opens you up to a bigger audience and and just to be able to be able to use your voice to to showcase the amazing work that you do to be able to help others so really that key takeaway is is that the regions is my passion women are my passion the babes bubbles event um, is all about empowering women so those were really key things for me to why I created that event um, I did create all of these workshops when I was over in Scotland for two months that's when I actually created my tour advertised it promoted it and um, so I did it behind the scenes over those two months that I was actually back home in Scotland as well to be able to do that and so really key takeaway take away for that point is is just remembering is about why why do you do the work that you do why do you want to be able to use your voice to be able to help others as well so now let's move on to number two so how did it go well, I was absolutely blown away by the response that I got, the response that I got around my workshops being pretty much full. Um, some of them were full, some of them were almost full. Um, and also the, from when I went previously back in November, I actually then ended up with more people attending because some of those times I, I hadn't really been that well known. So then it was able to increase the amount of numbers that were coming to my workshop, um, that the workshops were filling up faster than they were before, and that from previously, people were really that word of mouth and telling people that they should attend. So I think the response was amazing. And in the times that I hadn't been to, I really thank them for having that courage to be able to come to those events when they didn't necessarily know me, because what it means from there is that I will go back. So the response was just absolutely amazing to know that what I do is such a massive need in those areas and that people actually want it. So that was absolutely amazing. And it was just an absolute success all round. Um, having the key people coming to my workshops, the people that really wanted to find their voice, to sharpen their speaking skills, be able to gain more clarity and confidence to talk about themselves, their business, as well as their workplace. So I have people there that don't necessarily have a business. They have, you know, they're in the workforce, but they're also, some of them were volunteers um, in organizations and they want to be able to help gain more people to come along to the projects, the programs that they do. So I suppose my key point for that is that I want people to know that it's not just about people that have their own business that come to my events. It is people in the workplace that want to be able to learn more about how they can speak more professionally or connect better with their co-workers, um, be able to go to different events and talk about you know, who they are and what they do because that's super important. Um, I actually had, um, council candidates come to my workshops as well which um for for people in in australia that's something that's really pivotal right now um, is that people are running to um for council so it was amazing to have a whole different spectrum of women coming to the events and what the other thing is happens at those events is that people connect in that town that didn't know each other but they're so aligned with the same type of work or their values. And it was amazing to, for people to just to be really authentic and vulnerable, to connect with each other from other walks of life um, and be able to then catch up with each other afterwards as well. So that was really amazing to, um, to be able to, to have as well um, around why I create those workshops is that, you know, that the, the how part of it is that people then really connect with each other, which is super, super amazing. So, you know, it went, it went, it probably surpassed my expectations. Um, each event was 
each workshop was very different because each workshop is very different depending on who attends. However, they were always really good fun. Um, people also come to it and it's always really quite um, funny in a way is that people come to it and then they're obviously then um, asked to get up in front of the group to be able to um, share more about themselves after they've learned the structure. And it's always really interesting that everybody has the same type of response to it and go, I don't really want to do this. Um, But once they get up and then it means that that we have a group feedback on being able to improve on it, um, they actually go, it's not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I always find that really, really interesting that um, people come to those events And obviously the only way that we learn is by doing. So people do have to get up in the workshop after they've learned the process, the structure to be able to do it. I don't just throw people out there and get them to get up and and do those things. They've learned a process um, and then got up and done it. And it's just amazing to see the transformation in such a small period of time within the workshops and just how supportive everybody is within the workshop as well and everybody's in the same boat everybody's just a little bit nervous a little bit anxious a little bit overwhelmed and confused about how they communicate that effectively and then once they've learned what they need um, it's amazing to see that transformation so it was absolutely amazing um definitely it was bigger than it was before and so that was really really amazing and really the key takeaway is for number two is that is just if you're planning on doing any of this is that you know you've got to plan everything down to the last minute the last thing that you're going to do and sometimes that can take over for everything else that's happening but the key kind of message is that is that once you get there to do the workshops is that just fully embrace that all of that work that you've done um, and leads up to that day is absolutely amazing as well to be able to help other people in their life so I want to, and then that leads me into point number three, is that what did I learn that you can learn yourself? And this is what I love being able to help teach people is that I go out there and make all the mistakes and then I come back and help everybody else not make those mistakes. So my key learnings is, is that I, over in Scotland, spending time with family, creating my events, Uh, I didn't probably really look at the big picture on all of it is that I crammed way too much into two weeks. Um, Way too much travel because I drove from Brisbane to central Queensland, which is around seven, eight hours, um, and then consistently had travel between towns, running the workshops, following up with people, um, also booking in clients all around so it was literally non-stop for the entire two weeks which I have to say next time I go up I will be doing it very differently and so that I have some time in between so that was massive um, and I wouldn't have known until I had done it that it would have been absolutely massive. Um, I have come back from, from doing that pretty exhausted. Um, so definitely I will be re- rethinking that going back up, but you have to do it to learn. So I would say that if you're looking at doing you know, consecutive amount of workshops, potentially traveling is really make sure that you have potential time for um, potential clients, potential meetings, work if you're working and obviously have a business on the side, making sure that you have time to rest, but also so that you have time to be able to, um, I always um, email and message people prior to the event. So many days before it's an email, the day before it's a text message. I give directions, like I'm super down to the detail that I send people. And if you have back-to-back workshops, you're sitting in the car kind of traveling, obviously stopping um, and having to do that. So it can become quite stressful. So I definitely crammed way too much in in such a short period of time. However, I know that for next time that I'm going to spread that out. Um, One of the other things that I learned as well is that the key thing is to listen to feedback 
So I always have feedback sheets. I also make myself available at the end to talk to people. And some of the key learnings as well is that I share with people my seven step program. So I can only do so much in a workshop. However, there is obviously a great deal more. So out of a lot of the workshops, people were asking when I come back up, would I do the next level up? Or would I start offering um, a, different, a different range of workshops? So I thought that was really key that you know, people want that next level. So that was really key to be able to think about, you know, possibly running um, maybe some, you know, one different one each time that I go up that other people could then come back and attend. So I thought that was really key. Um, so just remembering to be open to feedback um, because that's the way that then you can evolve and you can grow your business and be able to really showcase and showing people other things that you do. So that's actually leads me on to my next point that's really key. And when I was up, when I was up there, I think that we get so involved and so in our own businesses or workplace that we forget that other people do not actually know fully what we do because we sometimes we're too close. We assume that people know exactly what we do. And I ended up gaining a client up there because it was some posts that I had done, some information that I had given that she didn't realize that I actually help people put um, PowerPoints together, put a workshop together, literally from scratch right up to presenting it. So that was really key for me to know that a lot of people actually don't fully know what I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients. So again, just remembering to remove yourself from what you do and be able to remember that we need to be able to communicate effectively more about what you actually do because you could be missing out and helping people. And if I hadn't have had that next encounter, even though she'd been to a workshop of mine before last year, so it's really key to make sure that everybody knows fully what you do um, so that you don't miss that opportunity and they go elsewhere. So the other one as well is that um, remembering that when we run workshops or speaking gigs and things like that is thinking about is that there could be people that you can connect those people with. So it's not just about running a workshop and then going, you need to come and work with me afterwards or whatever. It's actually about, you know, who out of all of those workshops could they potentially be connected with? And that was something that's so key. And I'm not someone that holds people and you've got to come and work with me and I'm not going to share things and, and connect you with other people. But each workshop that I went to, I started to be able to hear what people were saying and then go, you should connect with um, someone who came to my workshop last week. And so I started to be able to connect people who've all started to meet up afterwards. So that's a key thing to remember is that there's people in your life that could potentially be able to meet up with each other because they live close by, it aligns with something that they're doing. I mean, these ladies, um, their big dream, big picture is exactly the same. So why not bring those two people together? Because alone we can only do so little and together we can do so much. So it was a real pivotal for me to really showcase that what I do with my workshops is that I actually help women, that I actually connect them to be able to then make more of a difference in the world because I can only do so much myself. I can only help so many people. And by me helping the people that come to my workshop, the people that then do come and work with me further, they go on and they help more people. And that is how we make a difference in the world. And it becomes a ripple effect, is that you empower people to go off and be able to do what they need to do in their life, and they go off and they help other people. So that is something for to be able to say that I really fully learned this time, but it's something for yourself and the amazing work that you do is that just remember when we help people, 
with as much as we can, they go off and they help other people as well. And that's how we create change. That's how we help more people. That's how we can maintain our own energy as well by not thinking we have to do it all. So that is number three um, around just being mindful of your own energy, your own time frame, how much you can actually do is really super important because you know we have to be able to maintain ourselves to be able to help more people as well. Um, remembering is that what some other programs that you have that are not being communicated to your potential clients. Um, and remembering is that you can be the, the, the key um, connector at being able to connect more people to help more people in the world. So that is my top three um, tips from my tour. Um, and really just as a, as a take home message as well is that don't wait get started now to be able to help more people, be able to then allow them to go out and help more people as well. So don't wait, start now. And if any of you watching just now who would like to learn a little bit more about how you do that, then please get in contact with me and I can have a bit of a chat on the phone um, and I can see if and where I can help you. It'd be absolutely my pleasure to do that. Um, a couple of people had asked me about letting you know a little bit more about some speaking gigs that I had just recently. I am going to actually do a separate live for that because I thought it would just be way too much information on one live. So I will do another live this week and be able to share a little bit more about how to get speaking gigs and be able to maximize when we are speaking in front of groups as well. So I hope that this has been really helpful to everybody. If you have any questions on any of this, you're watching on replay, pop your comments in there. If you want to contact me as well, um, you can private message me um, or comment below and I'm more than happy to contact you and have a bit of a chat further. So thanks everybody for listening and joining in. I hope that's been helpful to you and have an amazing rest of your Monday and have an amazing rest of your week as well. See you all later. Bye.